In this lesson, I am going to help you emphatically build your vocabulary. And I'm just trying to emphasize it emphatically, uh, immensely, greatly build your vocabulary. And learning collocations is a, an amazing way to do that because these are phrases, these are words that are frequently used together. So you're not just learning one word and what it means, but you're you learning other words that go along with it. So not only is this going to help you build your vocabulary, but it's going to help you sound more natural when you're having a conversation, because these are the phrases that native speakers often use. And I, I'm going to bring that up. You'll see what I mean as we go through this, because you may use some words together that it's not incorrect, it just may not be commonly used. And I, I like to point that out in my classes when I'm, I'm running the course and tell people, hey, it's a little more common if you use it like this. And if you are someone who enjoys building your vocabulary, please subscribe, turn on notifications so I can become your teacher. My name is Wes. That is what interactive English is all about. And if you would like to get a copy of these lesson notes, you can join my email community. There is a link down below in the description. I will go ahead and throw it down there, out there in the chat as well. If you are already a part of my email community, I check your inbox. I, I sent them to you already and you will, or you will receive them soon. So. Just want to get that out of the way and begin with our first question. And because, of course, this is interactive English, I want you to participate, answer the question, write it in the chat, write it in the comments, and I'll, I'll give you a moment to think about it, and then we'll talk about uh, the correct answer. So it's a uh, mm, chilly outside. And really, the collocation is to say uh, mm, chilly. We're talking about the weather. What, are, what, what word would you use to complete this sentence? Again, there, th there's more than one answer. And that, that's the, the beauty of building your vocabulary because you could use different words that have the same meaning and there are maybe several collocations. I actually have two that I would like to point out. So what do you think? It's a uh, mm, chilly outside. As we go through, I'll try to give some some shout outs. Great job. Uh, fly, uh, Nini Nu, uh, Lolly, Vidya, perfect. So I would say it's a little chilly outside or it's a bit chilly outside. In this context, we're talking about the weather and you just want to use one of those words a little bit uh, or a little chilly or a bit chilly. In this case, I have heard what I what I wanted to, to talk about. I've heard people say something like, it's a little bit chilly outside. In that case, I would say it's a little um, redundant. Just choose one. It's a little chilly outside. It's a bit chilly outside. Now, to give you a point of reference, when I said sometimes the it's not grammatically incorrect, but one may be more commonly used as than another, and that's going to help you sound natural. So a great resource is to use Ngram Viewer. This is um, uh, basically mostly taken from written English, and it graphs how frequently certain words or phrases are used. So that this allows us to compare the two. And I can put that in there, a little chilly, a bit chilly, and it just graphs it for us. And you can see which one is a little more common. If I zoom in, you can see that it's a, it's a little more common to say, oh, it's a little chilly outside. But there is nothing wrong with saying it's a bit chilly outside. So this is just a good resource if you have, well, two different phrases and you're thinking, well, which one is more often used? You can check Ngram Viewer. And I'm going to come back to this throughout the lesson. So the next question that I have, and yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure you know the answer because I ask you this all the time. You probably hear this uh, in other videos. People would say, yes, I would love it if you mm the like button. Which, in this case, which verb would you use to complete this sentence? We're talking about uh, the like button. What are you going to say? And of course, there are, there's more than one verb that you could use. And generally speaking, what, what I would say to, to go ahead and kind of lead you into this is think about uh, 
again, you, you listen, you watch my videos, like what, what are you going to say? Now, when talking about a button, I think it's normal you would press a button. That is a common collocation. Oh, just, you know, just press the button. However, in this context, when talking about social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, and people talk about the like button, generally speaking, they, they try to add a little flavor and really emphasize it. So in that case, what I would say that, again, there's more than one answer. I would say you could hit the like button, smash the like button, you can crush the like button, whatever it is. So I, I saw some answers in there as far as people putting press. That is a common collocation, press the button. However, in this context, when talking about YouTube, for example, right now in my video lessons, and you can listen for it, I would say, oh, please, I'd love it if you just hit that like button and it just helps out the channel and the video. And yes, that's true. If you enjoy building your vocabulary, please, hit that like button, go ahead and smash that like button. The reason why I don't think I would say press is because it sounds a little passive, uh, whereas in this case you wanna be sound more, oh, it's more exciting, it's more adventurous, you wanna hit something instead of me just like politely asking you, but I could, hey, please, just please, just press that like button. I would love it if you press the like button. Anyway, either you press it, hit it, smash it, it's, it's all good. Um, as long as you do one of them, that would be perfect. But hopefully that makes a little more sense as far as walking through those different examples because all of them are correct. If you want to say press the like button, hit the like button, or smash the like button. The next one, take your time and do not try to mm corners. So this is actually an idiom. And I have a couple of idioms in here because I want to help you build your vocabulary. And in this case, there would be a specific word missing. And I already see so many answers in there. Excellent. Um, Lolly, Miranda, Vidya, Angela. We're talking about cutting corners. To cut corners, this is, you could say it's a collocation. It is an idiom. And I'm, going, I'm giving you the meaning right there. You're doing something in the quickest way possible, maybe in the cheapest way. And often when you cut corners, it may harm the quality of your work. And that's why I think somebody would say, oh, you know, don't, don't cut any corners. You wanna do quality work, try not to cut corners. Good phrase, good idiom to know. Let's keep moving right through these. So here is your next sentence if I'm talking about ageism. Ageism, you know, judging people based on their age is a mm of discrimination. So we're talking about the noun discrimination. What word would, would you use in this context? And there's more than one answer and I'll, I'll point out what I mean. It is a mm of discrimination. I would say in general, there is a, I don't want to say a more, a correct answer, but a preferred answer. And I say preferred because it's just more commonly used. And I'm going to kind of keep talking because I haven't seen the answer. Uh, so the, the answer that we're looking for, excellent, nice, um, just a random person, you nailed it. Uh, talking about a form of discrimination, something is a form of discrimination. To give you some examples, I have some news headlines for you. This is a, a, a way that I like to present different, well, vocabulary, in this case, collocations, so you can see how the phrase is used in context. Uh, it says, the negation of diversity is also a form of discrimination. Hate crime laws are a form of discrimination. And that last one down there, talking about, well, ageism, age discrimination, most widespread form of discrimination in Latvia, says ministry report. So in all of those examples that those news headlines were using a form of discrimination. Now, I saw other words in there like kind or sort, then th those would work as well. But if we go back and I want to refer to Ngram viewer in this case, so I'm comparing form of discrimination with a kind of discrimination. 
And again, there's nothing wrong with saying, oh, this is a kind of discrimination. You will hear this, you can use it in this context. But just using Ingram Buer, you can see that it's a bit more common, it's more often used to say that something is a form of discrimination. discrimination. And that is why, again, I don't wanna say things are um, in this case, like, oh, this is correct, this is incorrect. Both of them are correct, but being able to understand and know which one is more commonly used, this is what I mean when I say that learning collocations is going to help you speak in a lot more, more of a natural way, because these are the phrases that, that native speakers end up using in talking about, well, oh, this is a form of discrimination. Uh, it's just a little more common than saying a kind of discrimination. Here's the next one, and I, I wanted to include this because I hear people still make uh, this mistake from time to time um, in my, my speaking course. So we're talking about sharing an opinion, mm, my point of view, and this is, <laughs> this is me, I'm not being humble or modest at all, uh, I'm kind of bragging. Sometimes uh, I try to be modest, but just for, um, for this example, Mm, my point of view, this is the best channel to learn and fine tune my English skills. So I'm, I'm pretending that this is something that maybe you believe that you think that, that you would be saying. So if this is your opinion, how are you going to introduce this opinion? What word is missing? And I know that uh, so these words are commonly confused. I, in this case, I would say there is a correct answer. So great job, Zoe, Takayo, uh, Lali. From, from my point of view, this is the best channel to learn and fine tune my English skills. I hope that you think that. Uh, I don't know for sure. Uh, you can hit that like button. That would tell me like, oh yes, uh, from your point of view, you think is the best to fine tune your English skills. So there are a variety of ways to introduce your opinion. And what I think gets commonly confused is from my point of view and in my view. So just keep that in mind. If we're talking about point of view, you want to use from, from my point of view. You could also say from my perspective. Or if you're going to use in, then the phrase that you would want to use, this other collocation, in my view, or often it's very common to say in my opinion. But these are not, in, in this case, from and in are not really interchangeable. People are going to know what you're, you're saying. They're going to know that you're expressing your opinion, but it could just sound a, a little awkward. So just keep these phrases in mind. From my point of view, from my perspective, in my view, in my opinion. Those are great phrases whenever you want to share your opinion. So even just going back to the, the last example, I said, oh, from my point of view, this is the best place to learn and fine tune your English skills. I would say, I hope that you believe me. You know, that's what I'm telling you. I hope that you believe me and are willing to mm, me the benefit of the doubt. This is a, in this case, I would say it's a fixed expression. Mm, benefit of the doubt. There is a missing verb in there. Which verb is going to complete this expression? And I think that probably you may know this because it's pretty common. You watch movies, TV shows, you will hear this phrase. I hope that you believe me and are willing to mm, me the benefit of the doubt. I see, <laughs> all right, excellent. As people just jumping on this one, perfect. Uh, Rose, Angela, Talal, Pamela, we're talking about give, to give someone the benefit of the doubt. In this case, I hope that you give me the benefit of the doubt, which is to believe what I'm saying, even though it, you, you're not really sure that there may be other people out there who disagree. But if you give me the benefit of the doubt, you, you trust what I'm saying, you trust what I'm doing, even though what I'm saying may not be true. So that is the meaning of to give someone the benefit of the doubt. And often you would use this in a context in which you are skeptical of, 
what someone is telling you and you're not really sure to believe them, but you're like, okay, I'll trust you. I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. So another great expression to learn and know and use. And again, this is that you're going to use it with that verb to give someone the benefit of the doubt. Here is the next one. In order to be eligible, you need to mm the following conditions. So let's say that you want to participate in some event or competition, but there are certain conditions and somebody tells you this, well, you know, you want like to take part in this competition in order to be eligible, you need to mm the following conditions. So we have that blank and the collocation is really the verb that you might use with conditions. Mm, the following conditions. I will tell you there, there is more than one verb that you could use. So in this case, I would say there's not a correct answer, but I could use a word like preferred. There may be a preferred answer. And in this case, of course, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, some comparisons using Ngram Viewer. So we're talking about trying to be eligible. And in this case, to, when talking about conditions, I would say I haven't seen it yet. So there's another verb in there that I haven't seen. I, I see people like using meat. There, there's nothing wrong with meat. Um, but there's another verb you could use a fulfill that works. I, I would have to put that in there and see how um, often it would be used. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. And I think once I tell you, of course, you'll be like, oh, yes, I, I've maybe heard this phrase. So I would say you need to satisfy the following conditions. Now, many of you put meat in there to meet the following conditions. That is correct. That is OK. But if we want to compare these two and talking about satisfy the following conditions versus meet the following conditions, both of them are correct. And that's why I said one may be in this case slightly preferred over the other because you can see that it's a little more common to say to satisfy the following conditions. Now, if I want to change the word conditions and put another word in there, this is how it's, again, I find it fascinating how the language changes. So closest to me right here, you can, I zoomed in on it, to satisfy the following conditions versus to meet the following conditions. It's a little more, uh, you know, it's more commonly used to, to use the verb satisfy. If I change the word conditions to criteria, now it, it just flips around. In this case, you would use the verb meet. You need to meet the following criteria. So if we're talking about criteria, I, I would definitely recommend that you use the verb meet. Oh, well, I don't meet the criteria or, um, she participated because she met the criteria. And I, once again, I would say satisfy is not incorrect. It's just not often used. So in that context, I would definitely go with meet to meet the following criteria. But if we're talking about conditions, you could use satisfy to satisfy the following conditions. So language, it's gonna, things get changed all around. Again, one thing I think is great about collocations, you're building your vocabulary. And in this case, because we're talking about the frequency of words used together, there's not like, oh, this is right, this is wrong. Sometimes that may be the case, but often it's just a matter of learning which one is more often used and understanding that and then being able to use that as part of your speaking fluency. Let's go mm, a bite to eat. This is a phrase that I think is pretty common. And maybe I, maybe I think that because I say it quite often talking to a friend, a family member. Hey, would you like to go? I almost said it. Would you like to go mm, a bite to eat? And I see a lot of answers in there. Excellent. Lali Takayo. Curious Ghost Netherlands. I like some of these names. Manuel uh, Talal. We're talking about to grab a bite to eat. Of course, if you use the verb get, that also works as well. Um, I, I didn't compare these two, but I think both of them are, are often used. Let's go get a bite to eat. Let's go grab a bite to eat. I feel like if you were in a, a situation, 
in which you were in more of a hurry. So you only have a certain amount of time for lunch. In that case, I think you would use the verb grab. Grab would imply like some quickness and you need to hurry. Oh, okay, let's just go grab a bite to eat and then we'll come back. But either one, grab, get, both of them work. Uh, excellent, good job. Every you guys nailed that. Um, Trong, SSI, good to see you. Perfect. Here's the next one. I would appreciate it if you could summarize the policy in layman's mm. For this one, there is a specific answer that I think, I, I, I guess you could say is correct. And this is another idiom, another expression that I just wanted to teach you, but these are words that are often used together. There is another word that I think you could use in this context, but overwhelmingly, you're going to end this sentence with this specific word, layman's mm. So that's the phrase we're talking about, in layman's mm. There's something that I want you to explain to me and just say, look, give it to me in layman's mm. Tell me in layman's mm. So what do you think? I've uh, <laughs> seen some uh, good answers in there. Yes. Um, Talal, Rihan, Angela. Uh, we're talking about layman's terms, in layman's terms. The other word that I feel like you could use, you may hear, in layman's words, that also works. However, I think it's just much more common to say in layman's terms. In this case, terms and words, it really means the same thing. I saw some other people put language in there. I, I, again, my recommendation in this case, if you want to use this expression, I would say in layman's terms to refer to simple language that anyone can understand. If someone's trying to explain something very complicated and maybe you don't have a professional background, like, look, just tell me in layman's terms. Give it to me in layman's terms. It's, a, I think, a great phrase to know uh, because sometimes I think it's better to have things explained in just using the simplest language and you just have it in layman's terms. How about uh, this one? This is a question. And again, I feel like just thinking about it, you probably would know the answer. Would you be willing to mm, more responsibility? What is missing right here? There is a missing verb and the collocation would be when you're talking about responsibility. And think about the question, think about the context. What is, what is this person asking? Would you be willing to mm, more responsibility? There are different verbs that you could put in there, but I'll go ahead and give you a hint. The one that I'm looking for is a phrasal verb because I think that would be the verb that's most commonly used in this situation. So think about a phrasal verb. Which phrasal verb is going to complete this question. Would you be willing to mm, more responsibility? Uh, so excellent. Good job. Takayo, uh, Manuel, uh, Rose to take on more responsibility. I saw some answers with take. In this case, again, I would say use that phrasal verb to take on would be more like, okay, to accept. You're going to accept more responsibility. You're going to take on more responsibility. This collocation is often used in the context of work. You have a job and a colleague asks you or your supervisor, boss, whoever asks you, look, could, would you be able to take on a little more responsibility? And when you're talking about responsibility, you'd often use this phrasal verb to take on responsibility. And I would say it's even common to use the word more in there, to take on more responsibility. Not really, not often somebody's gonna ask you, hey, would you, would you consider taking on less responsibility? I think most of us would jump at that opportunity. Yes, I would love it, but typically people are gonna want you to take on more responsibility. Then I have this sentence right here. For this one there, of course, there's 
more than one answer, but there is a collocation that I wanted to point out because I think it may be new for some of you. There is a mm difference between British, American, and Australian English. Of course, there are many similarities between these different varieties. However, I could say there is a mm difference between British, American, and Australian English. There are there are a lot of different words that you could use to complete this sentence. Like, I see a subtle difference. There's a huge difference. There, th those work. But there's one collocation, the, this adjective that I would like to use that would mean clear and obvious which are other words that you could use. There's a clear difference between British English. There's an obvious difference between British English. Um, there is a slight difference. You guys are putting in uh, a lot of great words in there that you could absolutely use in this situation. But the collocation that I wanted to, to teach you or talk about is there is a stark difference between British, American, and Australian English. Now, this is a collocation, even though there are probably other phrases, other adjectives that you would use with difference that may be more commonly used, but I wanted to point this one out in case this is new. If you're talking about a stark difference between two things, you're basically saying that there is a very distinct difference. It is clear, it is obvious, there is a stark difference between British, American, and Australian English. Once again, uh, I just want to give you some news headlines so you can see how this is used in context. And uh, for when talking about a difference like you have just seen, there are a lot of different words that you can use that are correct and would work. So new study reveals a stark difference of asthma rates in poorer and richer, and richer suburbs. The next article, the stark difference between Trump and Biden's response to Navalny's death. And finally, why is there such a stark difference between Wrexham's home and away form? I think they're talking about the Wrexham football team in this case. So even though there are many words that you can use, if this is new and you wanna emphasize uh, that there is a clear difference, you can use this word and said there is a stark difference between whatever things that you want to talk about. Then I have this uh, sentence for you. We're going to go uh, in a legal direction now. Tomorrow morning, my attorney plans to mm an appeal. If you're not a lawyer, then this you, you may not need to use this phrase. However, you're going to hear it in movies, TV shows, the news. The, you always might read in a newspaper or something about some lawsuit that's happening, and you may come across this phrase right here. We're talking about an appeal. So this is the, the verb that may get often used with this noun, to mm an appeal. In a legal context, which verb are you going to use? Tomorrow morning, my attorney plans to mm an appeal. See some correct answers. Yes, S, Sai. Great job, Talal, Angela, to file an appeal. Tomorrow morning, my attorney plans to file an appeal. If I'm trying to think if there are other verbs that you could use in this context to... Um, yeah, I, I, off the top of my head, I can't think. I would just go with file in this case. You're going to file an appeal um, to fight um, a decision that was made that you disagree with, and you, a lawyer would file an appeal. And then, I did not know they were dating. I'm totally mm of the loop. This is an idiom. So in this case, I would say there's just there is a correct answer. How would you complete this idiom? But it is a collocation. These words are frequently used together. I'm totally mm of the loop. I did not know they were dating. I'm totally mm of the loop. 
Typically, I am not up to date with, I think, a lot of things that are going on, uh, especially in like other people's personal lives. And I would use this. I am always mm, of the loop. I believe this is probably uh, an idiom that I've talked about already in a lesson at some point. Excellent. Takayo and uh, Lolital Zoe SSI out of the loop. If somebody is out of the loop, you just do not have knowledge or information about a particular matter. So here are the phrases that we talked about just to get a little bit of a review and just to, to go ahead and use some of these now. If I'm just talking to you and say, I think this is a great way to build your vocabulary. When it comes to building your vocabulary, I definitely don't think you should try to cut corners. You should really try to learn these phrases, practice them, go out there and use them. I hope that you believe me and I hope that you will give me the benefit of the doubt. Because when people use collocations, generally they're not that complex and difficult and people would use them and you could say that using collocations, you are putting things in layman's terms, which I think is very helpful uh, because what else could I use? Um, there is a stark difference between learning your vocabulary this way and just learning a word and translating it into your native language. I, I, I think this is a, a better way to go to practice the word and see how it's used in context in English in these other sentences. So if you enjoyed the lesson, again, please hit that like button, smash that like button, or if you don't feel too aggressive, just press the like button. It's perfectly fine. And of course, um, from my point of view, I hope that you continue um, to watch more video lessons because, well, to, from my point of view, I think it's really going to help you build your vocabulary. I'm just trying to keep using some of these different ones. And yeah, if you're a little hungry, because uh, it's lunchtime for me right now, so I'm going to go get a bite to eat. And it's a little chilly outside, so I'm just going to make sure I wear my jacket. All right. So I, ch I think I went through most of them in that case. Now, uh, I want to thank you for joining me today. And I also, I'm always curious, how did you do on the, the quiz? Let me know down in the chat. I'm going to throw a little quiz in there right now, and you can tell me. And let me throw this in there. Let's see. Start a poll. How, how did you do on the quiz? And if I say, I really know my collocations. All right. I knew about half of them. And... <laughs> I really need to uh, study more. Okay, those are your three choices right there. If you want to participate in my little poll and let me know if you did 90, 100%, you really know your collocations, or maybe you got about 50%, you knew half of them, or a lot of this was new for you. You learned a lot of new phrases, and which is also great. And you could say, I really need to study more. And that's why I'm here, because you can join me all these lessons and study along with me because I want to help you build your vocabulary and keep improving your English skills. That is what it's all about. So thank you guys so much for being here. I hope that you have a wonderful day. I've had about, uh, okay, quite a few votes. And it seems like it's a little bit of a mix between people knowing most of these or knowing about half of them as well as just a lot of it being new so it's always good to get that perspective i feel like i did a i feel like this was a good lesson then as far as the uh the different levels and people who are taking it if it's a bit of a mix then i, I take that as a positive so have a wonderful day um and keep up the good work and of course i will see you in the future with another lesson real soon so long